The Epilepsy Foundation acknowledges the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of the land on which this property stands. We respectfully recognise Elders both past and present. Hi, I'm Sam. Uh, currently I'm a university student studying uh, Tertiary Studies, Certificate 4, at RMIT, RMIT University in the city. I was first diagnosed with epilepsy in 2013 at the age of 13 and I've had it ever since. So I feel like people with epilepsy, if they were in my situation, uh, I always just thought, you know, I never thought, do I have the capacity to do this? Do I have the ability, abilities? Do I do the, I just took the plunge. I just went, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go do it now. Uh, so with my license, when I first found out that I had epilepsy and I went, oh, I'm not going to be able to drive. What am I going to do? And then I found out, you know, oh, you can drive. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do my license now then. Get my L's, get my time up and that stuff. Uh, when I found out, so my dream job for everything was to actually be a marine biologist. Uh, but for that, I needed a diving certificate, which I wasn't actually able to get because of my epilepsy. But then I went, oh, this is really cool. Uh, which is a different degree in science. I was going into environmental science, which can be linked with that, which I found extremely interesting as well. And I went, oh, I can do this, yet still you know, work with all the other stuff as well. I'm just gonna go do this, and it's still gonna give me the same experience. Going from high school to university was a big change with trying to manage everything. Uh, so instead of waking up at the same time every single day, now it's a lot more different, so different times every single day. Uh, so keeping on top with my medication is a lot more challenging than usual. Uh, other than that, it's usually just me carrying around extra medication because uh, I don't know what time I'll be home usually. between It's usually between 3.30 to uh, six, in, 6 in the afternoon. Usually it takes about an hour to an hour and 30 minutes just to get into the city because by tram, considering I can't drive there yet by myself. Uh, so that I have to take into account that, the time, and then it takes me about the same amount of time to come back home in peak hour. I don't feel like I need to discuss that I have epilepsy and go and just go around telling everyone. They still treat me as a normal person, even if I did tell them, I've told a few people already. But uh, I don't usually go around saying, you know, look at me, I have epilepsy. I have told a few lecturers. Uh, I do follow the uh, disability and health rules at RMIT, which gives me a little bit of extra time with some studies and assignments. Yeah, that's that's usually the only time I disclose that I have epilepsy to anyone. Uh, so the difference between high school and university are quite significant. Uh, one of them being that in high school it was very uniform. You would usually have, you know, leaving home at one time being home at the same time uh, and you wouldn't have to take anything out so you wouldn't need spare meds, you wouldn't need to be worried about your friends going, hey, we're going to go out, you're going to come with us. Uh, while going into university, it's a lot more everything's your own time so you have to make sure you get there on time, you have to make sure you're on class on time, you have to make sure all the travel is on time. Uh, so some things that I do usually is just taking some extra meds with me just in case. So if I'm on the tram on the way home, I you know, just need to make sure I've got them with me. Uh, and if friends go, hey, we're gonna go out, you're gonna come with us, I can just go, yeah, sure, I've got spare meds with me, I can go uh, without having to worry about, oh, will I be home in time to do this? Will I have to stop and not go with everyone? So, yeah. We try and have my meds at a specific time every day, so I usually try and have them at six in the morning and six in the evening. Uh, it's just easier to keep a routine than to go, have I had my meds? No, it's eight o'clock, okay, well now I have to wait 12 hours. So yeah, it's a lot easier to just keep it in a routine than try and just guess, you know, every, has it been 12 hours yet? Has it been 13 hours, yada, yada, yada? So usually if I try and, if I'm trying to deal with changes and things like that. I usually try and keep a at least a basic routine. So, you know, I'll try and be home by this time. I'll try and have my meds at this time. If I'm a couple minutes late, you know, that's fine. But always try and keep a uniform schedule, even though I'm not very good at it. <laughs> you know, going out with friends, it's 
pretty fun thing to do. I don't really know many people in my class here and a lot of people are actually younger than me that I know of in my classes. Uh, so a lot of my high school friends I still hang out with uh, quite often, uh, but that we usually organize everything uh, a lot better than you know, doing it just randomly as all the other uni students would do. So yeah, so it's easier to keep track of everything, of when to take meds, when to you know, make sure if I have my meds with me, bring water, take them, yeah. Uh, so I've actually chosen not to drink, uh, and within my actual friend group, we've actually only got one person who does drink, which everyone found quite surprising. But uh, because of my choices, I just went, no, I'm not gonna drink. It might increase the risk of me having a seizure, so it's better be safe than sorry and just go, no, no drinks for me. If that means I have to be the boring person out of our group, I'm fine with that. Uh, yes, I do. I do have my license. Uh, I have my all my learners right now, and I'm currently driving every weekend or trying to drive every weekend, being forced to by dad. Oh, I'm not really worried about driving. Uh, it's a lot. You know, everyone's stressed when they first start driving. It's all a new experience. Uh, I kind of just went. Well, I've got epilepsy. I don't really care. You know, it's something that I want to do. It's something that I need to have. I'll just get behind the wheel and try it out and. I've gotten, gotten well so far. <laughs> um, so when I first decided to go try for my license, I went a couple, about a year or two back and went, okay, I'm gonna have to start, you know, looking at everything, uh, the, what I have to learn to do it, what I need. So my medical, all my medical stuff from the doctor saying, yeah, you can get your license. Uh, so through a medical assessment, usually it's, you go in and have an EEG, I think it's, called they just stick a bunch of stuff to your head and then you get to sit on a couch pretty much and they test your brain for epilepsy activity uh, and if they say yep you've passed and you haven't had any major seizures for the past five years that they've kept records of uh, they usually just sign off on a document saying you know uh, this child or this teenager young adult um, hasn't had a seizure for this amount of time uh, as they're you know, neurologist, I have given them permission to try and go for the L plates or driver's license. And then you take it with you to Vic Roads. They get a photocopy of it and go, okay, this looks good. Um, but yeah, once you've gotten that down, done, you go straight into your license, start your L plays up, get your hours up, go into your P's, have the fun driving by yourself, that stress. And then yeah, get your full license. On my light driver's license, it says I have epilepsy. Uh, so yeah, so I studied for about a year and then went, okay, I think it's a good time, you know, hype myself up. I'm ready for this. I can do this. Went in to take my test and then felt, oh God, did I do this right? Hopefully I did this right. Uh, left and then a couple weeks later, they went, hey, congrats, you passed. Here's your L plates. Good luck. I went, oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so when they when they do ask, so I've never been pulled over myself, uh, but you do. Uh, from what I know, you do have to say, you know, I have, I do take medication. I do have epilepsy, and they go, okay, have you had a seizure any time? And I go, no, I haven't had a seizure uh, for the past five, six years now. Um, and yeah, you know, that's that's about it. And then, but as soon as you have one. Uh, they usually just go, no, you have to wait five years now until you can drive again because of that type of stuff. So remember, always take your meds. Mm. Don't forget them. Drink water. Don't drink and drive. Wear your seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at the age of 13, when I was diagnosed, uh, we actually, I was with a friend when I actually had my first seizure walking into school. So it was a bit shocking for him. Uh, it was a bit painful for me as well, waking up with cuts and scabs all over the side of my face because uh, I managed to have a pretty big one. Yeah, uh, hit two metal par uh, bars and then fell on some gravel. <laughs> wasn't wasn't the best experience. But um, after that, we thought I just fainted. Uh, and then a couple weeks later, it happened again. And then a month later, it happened again. And they went, okay, maybe we should look into this a bit more. Uh, so it changed my you know, look on things for that first couple of years going, you know, am I going to have a seizure this time? Am I going to have a seizure now? Uh, so we ended up getting a epilepsy alert dog, my, my dog, Chloe. 
uh, beautiful girl, beautiful Labrador. Uh, she's currently retired, but she's been with me since 2014. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's pretty good like that. Uh, so I also had epilepsy. We were moving to the United States just before or just after I was diagnosed. So we had about a year or two before moving to the United States. Uh, so that was also a big change in everything, especially going into a whole new school and ho hoping, you know, will I be that one of that one kid signaled out for being different than everyone else because of my medical condition. Uh, but surprisingly or not surprisingly no uh it was actually a really fun experience all the kids there were just nice in general no one treated me different everyone just thought i was the same person as you know their next door neighbor so yeah it was actually pretty nice not being you know ridiculed or anything like that i think after having my first one i think most people knew oh a kid's fainted but uh i don't think i really disclosed to anyone that i had epilepsy i didn't really feel like the need even if I did, I feel like, you know, it'd just be people treating me the exact same way. Uh, I eventually did disclose to my class and my teachers that I had epilepsy. They took it with a grain of salt. They didn't, they didn't care. I was just another student in their class. Uh, and then when I moved to America, I actually did a whole presentation to the entire school about, you know, epilepsy and how to deal with it, which was a big, big difference, especially being in front of 3,000 students in an American school going, you know, oh, listen, I'm probably the first child you've ever had at this school that has epilepsy. I'm no different than anyone else though. Uh, but yeah, no, no one really cared after even me going, you know, I have epilepsy, I may be different, but yeah, they more they more found it interesting that I was from a different country than mm -hmm. having epilepsy. So yeah, it's a nice experience. No one treats me different. No one's mean to me. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it has been me being open about it. I am very open about my epilepsy to most people. If they ask me, well, do you have any, you know, disabilities? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I just go, yep, I have epilepsy. It's, you know, it's had a big impact on my life, but it hasn't at the same time. I feel easy about disclosing it to people. It's, you know, it's more fun experience than, especially when they don't even know what it is. Uh, you know, you get to have the fun of explaining, oh yeah, it's, you know, having this, you know what a seizure is? And they're like, oh yeah, what's that? You know, they know what it is. And then you go, oh, well, the technical term for that is, you know, neurological term is epilepsy. And they go, oh, I didn't know that, that's cool. I went, yeah. Yeah, so usually it's actually quite interesting seeing everyone's reaction to me being so open about it. Some people are very surprised when I go, when I'm very open about it. So a lot of uh, doctors, especially, uh, are very surprised when I go, yeah, I'm, I'm open about it. I usually talk to people about it and they go, oh, that's, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I got Chloe in, she's actually a Melbourne dog. Uh, we got her while I was living in Darwin when I was first diagnosed with epilepsy. And uh, so she used to go with me everywhere. So she would go to school with me. She'd go to, you know, shopping. She'd be with me 24 seven. She'd sleep in my bed. She'd be with me. She would pretty much follow me around the house and it was my job to take care of her. It was very obvious what she was doing. Uh, so that's probably helped me a bit more getting over the fear of, you know, uh, I have epilepsy, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, so she used to just follows me around everywhere. Usually to alert, she would start whining and that would, you know, warn people going, you know, this guy's, you know, my owners might be having a seizure soon uh, and then people go, oh, what's wrong, you know, and then I'll most likely collapse. And then if I do collapse, she'll start barking very, very loudly. It's not, you know, that play bark. It's almost like a warning one, uh, very loudly. And that alerts people very quickly, which then they, you know, look at me while I'm still holding on to her. So even though she is retired, she does follow me around. She does alert if I do stare too long, but she does realize if I'm at, in front of my computer, <laughs> she, <laughs> she's, she does realize, oh, this is, he's probably just sitting there just playing games or watching videos, which most likely I am. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so she's retired now because I have entered uni. Uh, I felt like she didn't need to go everywhere with me anymore. Uh, but yeah.